Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Kareem, everyone. I'm Dr. Asya Nabi, and I would like to welcome you all to this our webinar on Spotlight on Kidney Health today. Kidney plays a vital role in our body by processing about 50 gallons of blood every day and removing one to two quarts of waste and fluids that leaves our body as urine. According to the Journal of American Society of Nephrology, 15% of adults worldwide struggle with chronic kidney diseases. Despite this alarming statistics, kidney health often gets neglected. Today's webinar aims to change that. We will explore the importance of kidney health and equip you with crucial information on prevention, early detection, and managing kidney disease. Whether you are a healthcare professional or someone speaker or someone concerned about kidney health, this session is for you. Our esteemed speaker will provide valuable insights and we encourage you to actively participating by asking questions and learning how to keep your kidneys functioning, functioning optimally. So join us till the end also for a chance to win a special kidney health package by taking a quiz on kidney health. Two winners will be selected based on the specific criteria. So let me introduce my esteemed speaker on this webinar today. Hello, doctor. Hi, hi, Asiya. First of all, everyone, uh, happy World Kidney Day. I am Dr. Krishnam Raju, consultant nephrologist from Prime Hospital. Thank you, doctor, for giving us valuable time on this World Kidney Day. Uh, about uh, Dr. Krishnan, uh, Krishnam, uh, let me introduce him properly. He's, uh, he's an inspiration by the idea of being a ray of hope. Dr. Krishnam Raju brings over a decade of international expertise in kidney care across India, Canada, and Australia. He's dedicated 11 years to treating patients with kidney diseases. He's a recognized researcher with 11 publications and an award-winning nephrologist specializing in transplant, chronic kidney disease, and more. Dr. Raju fosters knowledge sharing through active participation in community outreach and scientific conferences. So doctor, let's start our session and let us uh, give chance uh, to our valuable um, audience to also ask the question in the comment box. How important is the kidney as an organ for living? Let's start with that. So um, coming to the uh, kidneys. So whenever uh, some knowledgeable person who know about the kidney in, in general public, I ask them, what is the uh, product of the kidneys? They say it's the urine. So it is like saying the product of a factory is the smoke but rather the product of the uh, uh, function of, of the kidney is to maintain the balance in your body. It is homeostasis. So uh, it is the single most uh, uh, valuable organ which maintains the balance across your body. How much fluid uh, should, should your body have? How much should it excrete? How much toxins uh, which are tolerable in your body should be in? So it does play a vital role. And uh, during the process of evolution from, uh, uh, from the sea to the land, so it is the adaptation of the nephron, that is the functional unit of the kidney, which has played an important role uh, in the advancement of evolution. So that is how important the kidneys are. Pardon, I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry, Dr. I was on mute. So we have, uh, during the session, before preparing the session, we have already received a lot of questions uh, from the people. So I would like to go and um, uh, explain this to our audience. So if we talk about early dis uh, detection and risk factors, uh, what early warning signs or symptoms might indicate potential kidney health issues? So one of the uh, uh, disadvantages of kidney disease are, are uh, most of them, they can present without symptoms. So sometimes they are, they are detected only, uh, uh, only when uh, you do a test. Uh, so most of the uh, kidney diseases are underdiagnosed, but there can be certain uh, uh, aspects which you can pick up. So one of that is like in, uh, in patients with risk factors, such as diabetes, hypertension, having a lot of frothy urine is one of the risk factor to suspect a kidney disease. Another is blood pressure, high blood pressure, especially in the younger, uh, younger adults, like less than 30 years, less than 40 years, 
or you had a previously controlled blood pressure which is now uh, getting difficult to control even with two or three medicines and swelling of the feet swelling of the or puffiness of the face these are symptoms which can like uh, point you to look for kidney disease so dr for the urine when you say so it is necessary that it can uh, the stone formation in the kidney or you know urinary or bladder tract uh, can uh, stone can be the reason or it is most likely infection only so a uh, frothy urine usually uh, it can happen due to variety of reasons but a frothy urine which is difficult to flush that is usually caused by some protein leak in the urine so when the protein leaks in the urine the surface tension of the fluid changes and that is why you will get a, a frothy urine which is difficult to flush so not necessarily a, 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 kid, a kidney stone but it can be uh, a, a representation of something which is happening in the kidney but it may not be very specific but is it not necessary that if if someone has kidney issues will have pain at least in the flanks or lower abdomen or in the back so it can be without the pain as well <coughs> yeah it can be without the pain as well i think the classical uh, pain in the uh, back uh, will happen especially if you have a kidney stone which is blocking the urinary tract even if you have a kidney stone which is not blocking you may not have a pain because imagine if you have a kidney stone pain the stone has not formed last night it has been formed many months or years ago you have a pain on that particular day because on that particular day probably the the, the stone has uh, changed its position and is blocking the flow of urine that is when your kidney will balloon up and you will have a lot of pain so uh, so you said frothy urine uh, and uh, swelling in the feet are two more important things is there anything else what we should know uh, and uh, should immediately consult a specialist important is blood pressure very high blood pressure like uh, always uh, get your kidney checked Uh, but we don't have a habit of uh, early screening of kidney diseases so do, doctor with that question do you also recommend that uh, or, or my question should be what age we should start uh, getting kidney health uh, regular checks or yearly uh, checks done so uh, all healthy uh, persons above the age of 30 to 35 uh, annual checkup uh, which includes uh, in general a kidney function test like a creatinine and a urine test is advisable because and then if uh, 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 they have a fami family risk factors or a family history of diabetes hypertension uh, definitely get get yourself checked every one year at least and if something comes up or something is found in that then the frequency of uh, testing may reduce to once in 6 months or once in 3 to 4 months depending so what is the single most important risk factor should not be neglected uh, considering that this can potentially lead to kidney disease uh the 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 most common cause of uh, kidney disease in the current uh, uh, scenario is diabetes so uh, proper control of diabetes uh, is very important uh, to like um, ensure that the disease doesn't damage the kidneys or the filters of the kidneys right we will take one question also in between dr ryan uh, is asking is there any definitive medical therapy for kidney failure or just treating original reasons so uh, the the so the treatment of kidney disease is a it, it goes through different phases okay so because the kidney failure is an ultimate uh, end point where the meaningful kidney function is lost so at that point you would like to uh, support the kidney function like by dialysis or uh, various forms of uh, or, or, or if you want to reverse you have to go for a transplant so the definitive medical therapy for kidney failure is kidney transplant thank so, you doctor so when yeah. you said diabetes i'll go back to the question uh, how what how diabetes uh, is affecting kidneys what happens to the kidneys when someone is continuously uncontrolled diabetes or even controlled diabetes what happened to the kidneys in that uh, case yeah so to simplify this like uh, whenever you are having diabetes there is a high load of uh, uh, glucose that is blood sugar in your body and uh, the, the body mechanisms and one of that is the kidney is will try to eliminate as much as the excess glucose as possible through the urine and because of that it it will try to like uh, uh, hyperfiltrate 
I mean, it works harder than usual. And because of that, there are certain changes which will happen in the filtration apparatus. And eventually, the, the, the filtration apparatus, we call it a glomerulus. So it will get damaged and slowly the nephron filters are lost. So when you are born, each kidney will have around 10 million of these small filters called nephrons, each kidney. And these will never regenerate throughout your life. So once that filter is lost, it is dead, it is gone. So uh, it's our job or it's, it's uh, uh, in our interest to make sure that these uh, nephrons are, uh, uh, are efficiently functioning by, so, by maintaining good, good sugar control. So which uh, we mean to say that if someone is affected with diabetes, but it's controlled and try to reverse the diabetes, it will reduce the effect of long run for getting into chronic kidney diseases. Yes, yes, because it is proven. If you have good sugar control, um, the 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 uh, the effects on the kidneys are mitigated. So the lower risk of kidney damage due to diabetic kidney disease. Doctor, how blood pressure, high blood pressure, uh, is affecting kidneys? So blood pressure and uh, kidney share a, a complex relationship. Uh, they have a chicken and egg effect. So sometimes the kidney disease will cause high blood pressure. Sometimes the high blood pressure will cause kidney disease. But importantly, most of the people don't know that kidney is the uh, one of the core regulators of how much blood pressure should be maintained in your body by a system called the renin angiotensin system. And these, this uh, apparatus is located in the kidney. So once the kidney uh, gets damaged, the control of blood pressure also is influenced by damage of the renin angiotensin system. Another factor is uh, damaged kidneys cannot uh, excrete uh, 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 large amounts of water. And when water is collected in your body, that can also increase the blood pressure. So that is how kidney disease will increase the blood pressure. Similarly, when there is very high blood pressure, this pressure is transmitted to the uh, nephrons and they get damaged, they get sclerosis, that is scarred. So that will reduce the functioning of the glomerulus. So blood pressure can also lead to complete kidney failure and uh, mm. eventually leads to the transplant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So doctor, what is the significance of family history? What is actually family history when it comes to kidney health? So uh, family history is very important because there are certain diseases uh, which are uh, transmitted in an autosomal dominant pattern that is like this disease occurs in every generation and there are certain diseases which are transmitted in autosomal recessive pattern that is like uh, 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 which usually common in uh, ma marriages in cousins where there will be a, a skipping of generations. So one of the important kidney diseases uh, which is uh, has genetic basis is called autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease it is pretty common so uh, a, a family with a history of polycystic kidney disease uh, uh, whenever relevant uh, should get screened for any cysts in the kidneys so especially uh, a, a family member uh, over the age of 35 to 40 years they should get screened for that and even if you take diabetes say person with diabetes who had a family history of uh, kidney failure is is a, has a chance of 40 percent higher risk of having uh, uh, kidney disease or kidney involvement compared to a person who doesn't have a family history of diabetes and kidney disease so these are multiple genes are involved and the relationship is often complex so if there is history of fam family history of uh, kidney disease what other family members should know so it depends on the nature of the kidney disease. If we can identify, for example, if it is a most common one is uh, polycystic kidney disease. So the chance of the offspring uh, getting uh, the same disease is 50-50, 50%. So, and it can always be sometimes, uh, it can be in your father or mother or grandfather or your sibling. So. Uh, if a certain disease like uh, polycystic kidney disease is suspected, you tend to get history uh, from the um, um, uh, from the siblings of the patient. And uh, if uh, uh, sometimes we can do genetic testing also to screen for them. Okay, moving on, doctor. Um, when uh, you are uh, obviously people are directly coming to you for kidney issues, you are a specialist. 
So how many people you think are proactive getting themselves early checked for uh, any kind of kidney issues? Like, is there any, like, like we talk about heart health, we now talk about breast health, we talk about a um, lot of things where uh, awareness is already there. Do you think kidney is also being spotlighted the same way as a very important thing which acts creates actually the waste out of the body is giving uh, that awareness and that kind of right direction? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I wouldn't say it is at an ideal state, but I think it is improving because uh, uh, a damage to a kidney does not produce immediate dramatic results like in a heart attack. So where you get an immediate chest pain and uh, there's a risk of imminent death. But the process of uh, kidney failure is often slow, sometimes takes many days, weeks, months, years also. So probably there is a kind of a reluctance to get screened or, or, or like put it off for another day. So uh, that is why I get most of the patients I get are from other colleagues who have uh, recognized the complication of the kidney getting involved or as a part of a primary care physicians, recognizing the early uh, protein leak in the urine and sending them to me. But I think the awareness is uh, increasing. People are increasingly recognizing that kidney is definitely an important organ which needs to be tested. Right. So when, it, uh, when we talk about kidney tests, so if I uh, want to go and get myself checked, what tests is, are there in the kidney health panel? Yeah. So the good thing about kidney testing is it is very simple and it is not very costly. So by just, uh, we have two or three code tests by which we can definitely say that uh, there is something wrong going in your kidney or your kidney function is, uh, is doing well. So one of that is the uh, checking the urine, which is the urine analysis. We just do a dip stick. We, we just uh, dip uh, uh, the stick uh, in your urine and say that, is there any blood in the urine? Is there any protein leak in the urine? So that is one very um, uh, uh, low cost and effective test. Another uh, test is called the serum creatinine. So that, that test and uh, in, in some scenarios we do urine um, albumin creatinine ratio. So these are the three most important tests. And along with that, always check for the blood pressure. So to just screen for kidney diseases. So anyone who has family history should check the kidneys regularly anyone and discuss with the doctor so anyone who uh, is not aware of their health at least should check the blood pressure and anyone who has uh, the family history of diabetes or are infected with diabetes so it is mandatory that we take a proper and uh, you know good control of the health so moving uh, forward doctor um, so uh, importantly when anyone is having high creatinine uh, level uh, do you think it ever comes down? So uh, the high creatinine, imagine it like the uh, level of trash in your home, the creatinine. So the, uh, the way you can uh, like imagine is like trash is building up in your body. So why the trash is building up will vary. The causes of the trash building up vary. So there are broadly, there are two types of kidney damage. One is called the acute kidney injury which is a reversible kind of injury. That means the kidney can get back to normal. Another is called a chronic kidney disease, which means uh, the, the chances of a kidney recovery are very less. So in acute kidney injury, like if you have some vomiting from infection or uh, some uh, severe heart problem, there is a scenario where the blood supply to the kidney is temporarily affected. And that is why its cleaning function will reduce and creatinine will increase. So once these factors are taken care of, the kidney function will return to normal. So this is called acute kidney injury or a reversible kidney injury. Whereas in chronic kidney disease, uh, the kind of the, the, the creatinine slowly creeps up. So whatever the kidney function is lost, it will not come back. So then our, our, uh, our treatment is directed to reduce or slow down the progression of kidney disease. So we have one question from Dr. Deepak. Precaution, what are the precautions people with one kidney need to be taken and how frequently they need to monitor blood test? Very yes. nice question. Yeah, yeah, that's a very relevant question because uh, I had one patient who just uh, came for something uh, unrelated and uh, we did an ultrasound and he was found to have a single kidney. So he was very worried. I never had any problem. Why? Uh, where is my other kidney? So he was worried. So it is quite possible that 
people are born with single kidney and you don't even know about it because uh, to maintain a normal metabolic function, the other kidney will compensate for the work of the uh, 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 undeveloped kidney or a genetically non-developed kidney. And the precautions uh, these people need to take is because they have only one kidney, they don't have any reserve function left. So anything which will affect the functioning of this kidney, that is like if they have diabetes, they should have good good blood pressure, I mean, diabetic control, blood pressure control, avoid taking um, um, indiscreet, uh, indiscreet painkiller use. So all these things uh, they, they should, uh, uh, I mean, um, do to prevent the damage to the kidney and get an annual health checkup. And these people will be at a higher risk for blood pressure than the normal population. So uh, they, they may be requiring uh, blood pressure tablets to control the blood pressure. Uh, moving on to the other section, Dr. Food. So we'll quickly ask, is there any role of diet uh, in uh, kidney health? So diet does play a role in kidney health. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, there are different scenarios where uh, the role of the diet will also keep changing. For example, in a patient who is already having chronic kidney disease, where the kidney function to maintain the body salts, especially a salt called potassium. So potassium is very important because very high potassium will cause uh, irregular rhythms of the heart and it can cause sudden cardiac arrest. So, so we need to uh, like reduce the high potassium diets such as um, uh, uh, coconut water, uh, uh, juices, uh, red meat, etc. For prevention, like when you have uh, a, a, a scenario where you want to reduce the load on the kidney, you have to reduce the intake of high protein diet in a certain scenario. But again, it depends on patient to patient, uh, where you are uh, living, your uh, your dietary habits, etc. So, um, are there any specific food for people living with kidney diseases they should avoid? So, people with kidney disease should avoid um, um, high potassium foods, processed foods, uh, carbonated drinks, um, um, uh, uh, processed foods will, will, will have high sodium con content as a preservative. So high sodium will uh, uh, like increase the blood pressure, increase the proteinuria, which will damage the kidney. So um, low potassium diets and uh, avoid processed food and carbonated drinks. Uh, I'll come to a very important question. Let me take first this question from uh, Mariko. What are some lifestyle habits that can promote healthy kidney function? Does vitamin D intake helps? Uh, vitamin D intake um, uh, does not have any direct relationship with kidney health. But if your kidney function is compromised, then you need vitamin D supplements. So uh, per se, there is no evidence that uh, just the deficiency of vitamin D will affect the kidney function. And the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. And the important li lifestyle habits is to uh, 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 do regular exercise at least 30 minutes per day for at least five days a week. So that is very important. Appropriate hydration uh, based on your scenario. So at least 1.5 to 2 liter water per day. But uh, there are some ifs and uh, buts here. So suppose you have some a severe heart problem where you are advised to restrict water. So taking uh, water indiscreetly can actually affect your overall health. So just consult your doctor. So to to just customize and personalize what is your requirement because what your friends or neighbors or a person with a similar problem may not actually uh, reflect your requirements. So. so big question, doctor. What is the truth about the salt? So salt uh, is, uh, uh, the again, the relationship between salt and kidney is complex, but in general, high salt diets uh, will increase the blood pressure that will uh, in turn uh, have a higher risk of kidney damage. We have evidence that reducing the salt intake, that is less than six gram of salt per day will reduce the blood pressure and also reduce the protein leak in the urine. So protein leak in the urine is the main factor which will uh, drive the kidney damage. Lesser protein in urine, lesser the kidney damage. So if you take high salt 
uh, or uh, which is like uh, very common in processed foods you will risk the uh, increase of proteinuria and damaging your kidney so so at the same time i have seen patients like uh, uh, when i advise to reduce the salt they they kind of totally stop the salt like virtually a zero salt diet so such patients uh, they have another issue called hyponatremia so that is a very uh, another complicated problem which uh, is at the other end of the spectrum so just everything in moderation i think uh, uh, 2 to 6 gram of salt per day should should be the ideal um, uh, daily intake doctor is there any difference between pink salt black salt or white salt no everything is converted into sodium chloride in your body your body is smart enough and it process it so it doesn't matter so whatever the salt salt is a salt it doesn't matter even if uh, the composition yeah, yeah. Is uh, i need to break the myth but uh, it is not so because in uh, what what happens inside your body your body is smart enough and it uh, kinds of breaks up uh, into the, the 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 way it needs so it, uh, it doesn't matter what and i would like to tell my audience that the salt which we directly put in the food is not only the salt which we use from you know junk food uh which is hidden which you are not probably cooking but it is there in a very high uh, amount uh, available so we're talking about salt in general whether you take any color of the salt salt is a salt and uh, dr pepper is also a salt is pepper a salt no pepper is not uh, salt it is a spice so uh, but um, uh, the thing with spices are uh, they make you feel thirsty so um uh, i mean like for patients especially with um, chronic kidney disease some patient we ask to restrict the water intake so if you eat uh, spicy food they feel more thirsty and uh, they may take a uh, very high uh, fluid which will actually uh, be a problem especially in advanced kidney disease uh doctor what about the protein shakes and supplements in general and for anyone with kidney disease yeah so uh, we have to like uh, separate it into uh, different uh, say a normal person who is taking protein shakes or going to the gym so what is there in a protein shake or the most common protein i would say protein supplement okay so the protein supplement most often has a substance called creatine okay so uh, this creatine is processed into creatinine and in the natural uh, for the natural person this this comes from the muscle so there is a confusion like if you take protein shakes that your kidney gets damaged so i would like to clarify on that because when you take the creatine the as uh, i think in the previous discussion we have mentioned serum creatinine as a as a test for measuring kidney function so when you take this protein shake it will uh, cause uh, some error in the measurement of uh, the the serum creatinine and it will show an increased creatinine because uh, the 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 product is from the same um, uh, muscle so uh, and it will show an increased creatinine and that is uh, misconceived to be a kidney problem but that is actually a test abnormality which is not causing any kidney problem so increase in creatinine there is not correlating with a bad kidney function it is happening because you are taking a protein supplement so that is the uh, uh, what do you say a uh, clarity uh, i i would like to give so um, uh, uh, taking protein shakes will not affect kidney function but be careful about the quality of the protein shakes because some of the protein shakes uh, may be uh, may have some contaminants like which are like um, um, heavy metals or some some indiscriminate uh, i mean uh, producers so that can affect the kidney so do take care of that We have this uh, Shajna. She is asking, "What are the early signs of kidney damage?" We have discussed this already in the beginning of the program. Right? Quickly uh, remind. Uh, early is if there is swelling on the face, swelling on the feet, uh, so, for the urine, uh, or uh, maybe doctor, you can add more. If this, these are the early damage. So the earliest sign of kidney damage, if you want to pick up, get a urine test and look for protein. So this, this is the earliest. Uh, indicator where you can find kidney damage even before lot lot of time before you get the actual physical signs like the swellings and 
And so I urine for microalbumin is the real test. What anyone can easily do. Do the yeah. urine test, and if urine for microalbumin is higher, you really need to see a specialist. Yes, because yeah. uh, maybe there is no symptom at that point of time, so yes. it will pick up disease very early, even if uh, your blood pressure is also normal. Yeah, even if you get any physical symptoms, just get uh, give your urine, and we can like say that your kidney is functioning well or not. So I'll repeat: urine for microalbumin for anyone who wants to find out if. The kidneys are affected by any reasons. Yes. So urine for microalbumin is the simple and easy <coughs> and reliable test we can uh, go forward with. So I'll I'll move to the fasting section quickly because as uh, we have already crossed the time, I have some questions related to kidney health and fasting. But we'll take this question from Miss Mariko. Uh, does UTI occurs if one kid one uh, have kidney problem? So UTIs um, uh, can help can happen even if one does not have a kidney problem. But um, there are some certain uh, segment of uh, patients where uh, certain patients, especially in children who have an abnormal urinary tract by birth, they may get frequent urinary infections. So uh, a urinary tract infection in a child should be, uh, what do you say, followed up very closely compared to uh, a urinary tract infection in an adult. So uh, urinary tract infections are pretty common even and uh, most often they do not affect the kidneys and uh, they can be easily treated. I'm very thankful to the audience who are with us, connected with us uh, throughout this session. Now quickly, doctor, uh, we will ask fasting and uh, kidney health, safety and risk assessment. What is the recommended water intake for proper kidney function during fasting? So, uh, I mean, if they, I think uh, daily intake of 1.5 to 2.5 liter uh, should be appropriate uh, uh, and a safe range for a healthy individual while fasting. So, 1.5 to 2 liters is being shared. 1.5 to 2 liters, yes. So, if people who are fasting can break it into two, probably at the time of, uh, the, the best thing is to wake up early, an hour early, not at just 10 minutes before, then yes. you're not going to land up into any right situation. Yeah. So one hour before, uh, if you wake up, you can uh, drink at least a liter of water. And then at the time of breaking the fast, that's also ideal to uh, take uh, the uh, water. Yeah, it's ideal space it appropriately. So the second important thing is this water should be plain or it can be any beverages. Like if you see uh, the habit and increasing habit is the, uh, you know, uh, cold drinks and juices. So what is the recommendation on that kidney health and fasting? Yeah, so uh, I would not recommend uh, the, the soft drinks because uh, one thing, especially during fasting, uh, they will make you feel thirsty because they don't uh, just have water, they have other solutes. So your body tends to, to neutralize that, you will feel more thirsty. So I would not advise um, soft drinks, but uh, probably uh, fruit juices uh, and um, uh, fresh fruit juices may, and uh, water should be sufficient enough. Okay, I have one question here from Mr. Adil. Is it safe to take five gram of creatinine supplement along with protein supplement for gym going person? So uh, I think uh, uh, one of that should be enough because if you are taking creatine supplement, that itself is a protein supplement. So uh, depends on uh, uh, the, the expert who is guiding you, how much protein he wants to give you, what is your target uh, muscle uh, gain or weight gain which you are intended. So I don't think uh, both are required. I think one of them should be enough. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zahra Hussain, for that lovely cheers. And uh, we have Gulzarin is asking kidney failure uh, is hereditary or genetic? Uh, so uh, I, uh, I mean, there is. It's a very uh, what is a tricky, tricky question. question. <laughs> very tricky audience and very tricky. Yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so genetic is. I would I would imagine like the, what they mean to say is that does the kidney run in families or if you are born with a gene defect. You, would you have a kidney disease? That is what I would understand it. And it happens in both ways. It depends on the disease because there are sometimes there is a point mutation, uh, which is a genetic lottery. You get, uh, say, for example, there is a 
uh, cystinosis or something disease like that. So that is a genetic disease and something like a polycystic kidney disease. So that is a, a, a disease which runs in families. So it's a hereditary disease. So uh, it can uh, depend on both. But, uh, but uh, whether the kidney will totally fail will also depend on the nature of the disease because some diseases are very benign. They may not cause any uh, uh, damage to the extent that you go to a kidney failure and need dialysis. So it, it is very disease specific. Okay. Coming back to the fasting and kidney health, safety and risk assessment question, uh, Dr. Concept of electrolytes in kidney health. Can we take electrolyte sachets, electrolyte uh, mentioned electrolyte drinks to get ourselves hydrated specifically during Ramadan? When people feel uh, low in energy, they grab the energy drinks, feeling that there is an electrolyte or there is an, also an option of electrolyte powder separately. So what yeah. does the kidney uh, actually requires? Yeah, so uh, I think electrolyte preparations are a quick way of getting the uh, required electrolytes during uh, uh, the fasting period. So I think if you are really weak, uh, it makes sense like you can grab a quick, uh, um, uh, I mean, like electrolyte uh, uh, replenishing powder. And one of the important fact I want to say, you see Gatorade, that's one of the popular energy drink uh, electrolyte that, that was uh, invented by a nephrologist. So. So I think uh, uh, we definitely, if you want a quick grab of um, um, supplements during fasting to maintain electrolytes, I think uh, it, it should be okay. It, it's a fair job. So, but uh, be very careful that sugar-free uh, option is also a very risky thing. We're not going to talk about that, but that's something to be very careful about. And uh, probably the powder form, which is actually the electrolyte and not with the drinks, which are like, there are very, like, the most important thing is read the content read the uh, yes. what is what is in the drink please be mindful about that and be careful about your health and uh, who can safely fast with pre existing kidney disease if someone has already a kidney issue can they still fast yes they can fast because as i mentioned there are different uh, levels of cvrp of the kidney disease so uh, if patient is having a chronic kidney disease so uh, a stage of one to three where they are stable and predictable, uh, they can definitely fast. Uh, what I would suggest is like uh, 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 gather your experience from previous fasting, anything uh, which you found abnormal or difficult experiences during the previous fasting experiences and uh, try to get a, a consultation from your specialist one or two months before the fast and, and try to uh, like individualize and uh, uh, and make the factors which are uh, required for you. So people with kidney disease, if they still are fine to go ahead with the fast and doctor has given a green signal, yes, you can do fasting. Is there any self-check recommendation that they should do creatinine level regularly or any kind of symptom which can tell them, no, no, you cannot go with the fasting is not a safe option for you. Yeah, definitely advanced kidney disease, uh, CKD uh, level four, level five, uh, I wouldn't advise fasting because uh, I mean, there, there will be like uh, uh, faster changes in their health conditions, but stable conditions, definitely they can go for fasting. I think if they're able to tolerate fasting, probably uh, a, a, a serum creatinine once in uh, two weeks or once in a month, uh, I mean, once in uh, three weeks should be okay. Okay. So Dr. Man is this Ramadan fasting, which is definitely 30 days fasting, but what does the science says about intermittent fasting, which can be 10, 14 hours or 16 is to eight hours. Is there any recommendation that it is helpful for people living with kidney disease? So intermittent fasting uh, uh, directly uh, may not be helpful, but anything which helps you lose weight is helpful to the kidney. Indirectly, it is helpful. So intermittent fasting, uh, there is certain evidence that it will definitely help to lose weight. But is it sustainable? That is a totally different thing. So we know in the short term, it helps losing weight, whether it will help in maintaining the long term weight loss that we don't have uh, at least uh, adequate evidence to say so. Thank you, Dr. So, uh, Dr. Sunita is asking if creatinine with EGFR changed to a higher level since last time, is there any diet or medication to bring it back to normal? So uh, one important thing I would like to tell about the creatinine and EGFR is that EGFR is an estimated GFR that we are estimating and calculating. It is like if you're traveling to Abu Dhabi at 50 km per hour, you will be estimated to arrive at a certain time. So these calculation and numbers are highly influenced by uh, what do you say 
the factors like I mentioned, if you are not taking adequate fluid, your creatinine may be high and that day your EGFR may be low. Okay, so it is uh, uh, more important to categorize uh, what are the risk factors which are, uh, I mean, make you prone to increase creatinine. So don't focus on the EGFR, especially uh, if it is a acute kidney injury, there is no role for EGFR because the creatinine will be fluctuating. So EGFR should be used only in a stable kidney function. So in that scenario, we can like uh, make appropriate decision. Based we have on one that. question from Mr. Mohsen Ali. Um, he says, good morning. And could you please comment about the role of dialysis tech and technologists take part in the life of kidney patients life and also for the community awareness? Very nice. Yeah, yeah it's a very, very, very relevant and practical question because dialysis technologists and dialysis uh, are the backbone of the nephrology department. And for patients of uh, with kidney disease, these guys, uh, they stay with the patient for three to four hours, three to four times a week, interact with the patient. So they can be very good advocates uh, for, for kidney disease because uh, the, I think the best advocate uh, for kidney disease uh, or, or prevention should be a person who has experienced that. So our patients who have experienced that and recovered or making good or having a good quality of life are the best advocates that you need not fear kidney disease there are options to treat kidney disease and you can actually reverse kidney disease with kidney transplantation. I think I don't think any other organ failure is so uh, affordable and accessible to like uh, reverse the failure of the organ except the kidney. Okay, as we are about to close the session, uh, I would like to ask, and this is a very important question. What kind of over-the-counter medicines can damage the kidney and what is really important to stop? So over-the-counter medicines, yeah, this is a very nagging problem. There are many uh, instances where I had uh, in India patients uh, who were taking some native medicine and uh, that uh, uh, caused uh, uh, kidney failure also. So uh, later we, we sent the medicine for analysis. It was found to have high levels of uh, mercury and some uh, heavy metals so there are those kind of damage the kidney and coming to over the counter medicines because some some cultures it is prevalent that you take a lot of nutritional supplements it is good for you so uh, i don't think there's a need for nutritional supplements if you are able to take a healthy diet but dr so, painkillers we are very fond of uh, now it is available yes. in supermarkets as well yes so painkillers pain yeah, definitely painkillers, indiscriminate use will damage the kidney, especially there is something called, uh, I mean, like when you use them uh, along with the blood pressure tablets called uh, a group of tablets called ARBs, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, because these two try to reduce the, the, the load of the kidney by narrowing the blood supply of the kidneys. And if you use both of them together, they may compromise the blood supply of the kidneys. So indiscriminate use of painkillers, especially more than four days, five days. So you all, always consult uh, your your physician about the, uh, the, the pain. So if uh, better and safer options are available for long term use. Definitely. And uh, we do have transdermal patches also. Not necessarily you need to take oral uh, analgesics for everything. Um, two last questions, doctor. Effect of uh, tea and coffee on kidney health what is safe to use so the uh, i mean like the evidence is very shaky here like you can like uh, um i mean say most of the times uh, the the thing is uh, there is a confounding bias what i would say is that most of the people taking green tea or um, or uh, uh, healthy plant based drinks they tend to have a healthy lifestyle habit and that is why the problems are lesser in them so you cannot definitely attribute to a single factor like green tea so this is the bias and we don't have any uh, solid evidence that uh, this will influence the kidney uh, well-being so i don't think uh, it is strong enough to say that yeah, we will take this last question from mr fayaz faruqi before we end the session can kidney disease can cause itching as well Yes, kidney disease, uh, advanced kidney disease to the stage where you have uremic symptoms can cause itching. So not uh, just mild kidney disease doesn't cause itching, but very advanced kidney disease where your creatinine is around 10, 12, so and so, so that can cause itching. 
So uh, before uh, I will say thank you to the doctor for his valuable time. We have learned a lot. Uh, and personally, as a general practitioner, it was a very important session for me to learn. Most importantly, uh, what is kidney disease and how it is important for us? What are the risk factors which we should look for uh, in, in the daily life, specifically for the urine or swelling on the feet can be really something important. And if you're keen about uh, knowing the kidney health issues, please go for at least a urine for microalbumin simple test. If someone has already the significant family history, they should not take it lightly. They should definitely go proactive approach about uh, kidney uh, issues. And uh, any kind of food, any kind of supplement uh, is fine, but you need to be um, self-disciplined and read labels, read what is the uh, amount, what is the ingredient in anything you are taking. And uh, every salt is a salt, whether it's pink, black, uh, or white. With that note, uh, I wish you all the best for the uh, remaining Ramadan and uh, happy uh, days. And stay healthy and uh, stay blessed from Prime Health. Thank you, Dr. Asya. Thank you for all the um, uh, audience. And hopefully, you have a, world, a happy World Kidney Day and take care of your kidneys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.